Hello everyone. So in today's lecture, we are going to discuss about input, output, and memory addressing in Siemens PLC. Okay. So basically, input types and output types basically can be divided into two categories. So basically, digital input and digital outputs. Similarly, in case of analog, there will be analog input and analog outputs. Right. So now. Before moving further, we should know the some some of the basic terminologies about how the data is stored inside the memory. Okay, bits are what zeros and ones. Similarly, if you talk about byte, so byte is basically combination of eight bits. Similarly, if you talk about the word, the word is basically combination of two bytes or sixteen bits. Similarly, if you talk about double word, double word will be the combination of two words or four bytes or thirty-two bits, right? Data types can be categorized into four types. Okay, so basically, boolean means what? Boolean is basically zero or one state. Okay, so used for digital signals. Similarly, if you talk about string, strings are basically characters. Integer means what? Basically. A value existing from minus infinite to plus infinite. It can be any of the value between these. Okay. So similarly, if you talk about float, so float is basically a data type which contains the value which are in decimal. Okay. So these are basically the four types of data types which will be very important in case of our PLC programming. Okay. Now important point here to note is the integer and float addressings are for analog signals. Okay, so boolean is basically for uh, digital signals. Okay, and integer and float addressings are for analog. Okay, so addressing can be divided into two categories. Okay, so first one is I/O addressing and second one is memory addressing. In case of I/O addressing, this is the addressing of the input terminals and the output terminals of the plc okay similarly memory addressing is inside the memory of the plc okay so addressing can be divided into two categories first one is io addressing and second one is memory addressing in case of io addressing basically this is the addressing of the Input and output terminals of the PLC, and similarly, if we talk about the memory addressing, it is basically the addressing of input bits, or we can say the internal bits of the PLC's memory. Okay. Now, we should note that a processor can always understand machine language. Okay. So the data which is coming in the form of uh, integer values from the sensors that will be in the form of Uh, current or voltage that is from 4 to 20 milliampere or 0 to 10 volt signal, then this signal will be converted into uh, such a form that it can be understandable or we can say the processor can understand that data. So how this data is converted to bits that is the that is what we are going to see here. So first of all. we should know that the integers can be categorized into two form that is signed and unsigned integers right so if you talk about unsigned integers the values which don't have any sign all those values are called as unsigned integers right so here all the values from 0 or above 0 all these are called positive values so all this will be defined under unsigned integers right so if you are having only positive values uh, then we can write it without any sign also for example if you are writing 4 so the 4 value is not having any sign so by default it will be positive only okay similarly if you talk about signed integers in case of signed integers there will be sign present before the value okay so here if you observe minus 2 plus 1 Okay, so minus two is also a value which is having negative sign. Similarly, plus one is having positive sign. So basically, it is a signed integer. Okay, so any value suppose plus four that is having a sign. That means it is a signed integer. Okay, or understood what is the difference between signed and unsigned integers? Right now, we'll be seeing how this bit data is converted into 
integer form okay if you take two bits right suppose we are having two bits so uh, how many states are possible basically 2 to the power 2 is how much 4 so 4 states are possible using two bits right so 0 0 0 1 1 0 1 1 okay so basically we can have four states with it okay so uh, 0 0 means what 0 value similarly if you talk about 0 1 that is 1 similarly if you talk about 1 0 that will be 2 and similarly if you talk about 1 1 that will be 3 this is how we can write in case of unsigned integers from 0 to 3 right similarly in case of signed integers will be having it from minus 2 to plus 1 okay now similarly if you take 8 bits okay how many values can be represented using 8 bits so 2 to the power 8 is 2 to 256 right so in case of unsigned integers if you talk about unsigned integers means what here all the positive values including 0 will be there so we can go from 0 to 255 why because 256 total 256 values can be represented so 0 is all always considered in case of positive so if 0 is the one value then remaining there are 255 more values which can be represented using unsigned integer using 8 bits right similarly if you talk about signed integers so half of it will be divided here if you observe uh, if you talk about 256 so if you divide it by 2 then we will be getting 128 okay so in case of if you talk about signed integers from minus 128 to 0 that means how many values 128 values for negative and from 0 to 127 that is 0 is also included in it that means we are having again positive 128 values and negative 128 values that means total we are having 256 values so in case of signed values we can say from minus 128 to plus 127 okay now if we talk about 16 bits so 2 to the power 16 is 65536 so again in case of unsigned integers from 0 from 0 to 65535 and in case of signed integers it will be divided into half okay in two halves means what minus 3 to 7, 6, 8, 2 plus 3 to 7, 6, 7. 0 is also included in positive that is why it is 3 to 7, 6, 7. Similarly in case of 32 bits okay 32 bits mean, means what we are having one word that is 2 to the power 32 is 4 to 9, 4, 9, 6, 7 to 9, 6 okay so again we will be having 0 to 4 to 9, 4, 9, 6, 7 to 9, 5 okay similarly if you talk about signed integers so again it will be divided into half minus 21474836482 plus 21474836647 okay now if you talk about the io addressing okay now in case of plc's okay so we'll be having digital inputs digital outputs analog input analog output so in case of plc's we'll be having terminals okay so there will be connecting our wires or the signals coming from the pl uh, sensors right so in case of digital inputs so digital inputs will be connected to the following addresses right so uh, the addresses are like this i0.0 .0, okay i0.1 i0.2 i0.3 in this way we are moving okay so here if you observe these are basically 0 1 2 3 4 5 6 7 so this is what these are the input bits okay so these are what input bits similarly if you observe this value is 0 that means these are what bytes okay so basically it is 0 byte which is having 8 bits okay so 0 to 7 there are total 8 bits and this is what byte okay so it will be updated when this total 1 byte is completed so 0 to 7 there are total 8 bits so it is completed now so it will be updated now see if you observe here there is one okay so after completing that uh, one or we can say now the value has updated to one here okay now 
again it will complete the same and again then after 0 to 7 it will again update itself to 2 in this way the addressing will be carry forwarded okay now similarly if it here one more important thing is i so i is basically the identifier okay so identifier is basically used to identify whether it is input or output now in case of siemens plc's the output addressing is in the form of q0.0 see here if you observe this is one of the output bits okay so output is not represented by o okay so output is not represented by o here we will be using the addressing in the form of q0.0 q0.1 q0.2 in this way okay so again if you observe from 0 to 7 it will complete the total 8 bits and then only it will update itself okay so here the byte will be updated after completing 8 bits okay so in this way we are using the output addressing format okay similarly if you talk about analog inputs so analog are basically the values so obviously it will be in the form of word okay so basically uh, in previous uh, slide we have seen that if the analog inputs are present so what will be using word okay so word is basically what 16 bits to represent any values so the data will be coming in the form of 4 to 20 milliampere so it has to be converted in some other form uh, that is a binary language form that is why we need to use this kind of addressing okay here if you observe this is what iw128 that is what word addressing okay so iw is basically i is representing what analog input okay here in case of ai it is representing analog input and similarly if you talk about analog output this is like this qw144 qw146 okay so here one uh, you might have observed why after 128 130 is given so uh, we'll be discussing it in uh, the upcoming slides right why it is so okay now so digital inputs will be uh, i0.0 i0.2 i0.7 similarly after that uh, i1.0 i1.1 and it will go up to i1.7 and again then it will be updating itself so it will be i two dots one i two dot two in this way okay similarly if you talk about digital outputs so the addressing will be q0.0 q0.1 q0.2 in this way and uh, similarly analog inputs will be iw0 iw2 okay and analog outputs will be q w0 q w2 in this way we'll be having okay so i and q are also called as identifiers to represent the address if it is input or output okay so uh, to identify whether it is an input or output terminal here what will be using i and q okay and similarly w represents the word addressing for analog inputs or output so uh, whether you want to if you want to identify whether it is analog input or digital input we can identify it using uh, if you find w here okay so w means what for analog that is representing the word okay